The Buren Peninsula, breathtaking coastlines and deep protected harbors are a draw for locals and tourists alike. But those waters ran deeper than many realized, and in 2016, the residents of the peninsula found themselves in crisis. Mental health and addictions had been identified as a priority when it came to primary health care, yet those who needed help faced long wait lists to access services. Communities were in distress. 14 people had died by suicide in 16 months, four in the town of Grand Bank alone. My brother-in-law, Leonard, died by suicide on September 20th, 2016. And on December 17th, 2016, my husband, Lindsay, also died by suicide after a very lengthy battle with clinical depression and bipolar disorder. Healthcare providers felt overwhelmed and helpless. As a first responder um, today, this past five, 10 years, Probably 30 to 40 percent of what we respond to is directly related to mental health. Our area has been, you know, uh, inundated with uh, mental health crises. As frontline providers and clinicians, we were feeling the impact of feeling overwhelmed, stressed, um, feeling like we weren't doing enough for the community uh, to help prevent these suicides from occurring. Everyone agreed that change was needed urgently. The mayor of Grand Bank called Eastern Health and asked for help. Eastern Health responded quickly and with the Department of Health and Community Services mobilized a team on the Buren Peninsula to work with residents and community leaders. We heard frustration, we heard loss, uh, we heard a little bit of anger, but what happened was that we actually listened. And it's only in listening that the change can really start to happen. A series of stakeholder sessions were held to identify the problems and more importantly, come up with solutions together. So sometimes that happens through conversation between community or health and their different perspectives. Other times we can use different activities, um, different learning opportunities, different games that help people to start considering maybe there's another way that I can view the world. Maybe there's another way that I can understand my work. I think the biggest difference in the approach to change this time was that the ideas about what the change would be, how it would happen, what the goal was and what was needed came directly from the people involved. The change was dramatic. A 180 degree turn from a system of referrals and wait list to a walk-in service for mental health and addictions needs anytime it's needed. We were a part of the process that got us to this point. We were very much involved in the problem solving that got us here. And we were encouraged to think outside the box. And we actually took it a step further and we got rid of that box. And we created a brand new service that I feel is the Cadillac service of mental health and addictions. Totally positive. I mean, the, the, the difference is, is, uh, is unbelievable, really, to be honest with you. Like, I mean, I mean is, is, uh, is it all over? No, no. But uh, the, uh, where we've gone from 2016 to 2019, it's fantastic, really, and we're very, very pleased. Today, wait lists have disappeared. Prevention is the priority, from students to seniors. Residents partner with healthcare professionals to maintain good mental health and to recognize the signs of distress in time to prevent a crisis. Together, they are forging a new path on the peninsula, one that leads to a place of hope. Let's just stop what we're doing for a second and repeat after me. I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. I am powerful. I am powerful. I am powerful. I am powerful. I am worthy. I am worthy. I am worthy.